would be, it is a complete betrayal for this reason, that actually it is accepted by the government that we, during that transitional period, and, and perhaps and more likely definitely, will be in a position where the other 27 member states are making laws over us and imposing them, we would be accepting them under a prospectively new act of parliament called the Withdrawal Agreement that they're hoping to enact in consequence of the Withdrawal Agreement itself. And we would therefore be effectively neutralizing, castrating our ability to be able to govern ourselves simply because it had been decided in this withdrawal agreement. And the effect of it is to put us into a position where we will be controlled and the norms will be made and imposed upon us by our stupidity in accepting these arrangements. And there will be no transcript, no reasons given, no explanation of why it had happened within the Council of Ministers, all of which would take place behind closed doors. Yes, with no paper trail, no transcripts, nothing. Very interesting. It is a completely and totally undemocratic arrangement. It completely cuts across the decision of the British people on 23rd of June 2016. It completely cuts across the uh, appeal of the European Community Act 1972. And they're even proposing, and this is even more breathtaking, to adjust the European Communities Act 1972 in order to enable us to be able to go back into effectively the European Communities Act 1972, which is so breathtaking you can't even imagine it even being thought of. That is breathtaking indeed. This is Catania Alvin. It's I'm in a lit up because it's late at night and I just wanted to do something and that seemed to be really uh, quite a stunning thing that just showed itself up at that moment. So that's intuition or perfect happening. I've got in front of me um, a very interesting writer called John Rappaport and the title is Who's Destroying England and Western Europe? Now let me first say thank you very much all of the subscribers who are making comments all of you subscribers who subscribed over the days the weeks etc and it's very exciting to have communication out there now some is the sort of communication that you actually can't easily communicate to and when people say it's fake news then what I'm writing on some occasions but I'm going to say it here is if you say it's fake news then you must, just as I've put something out there to you, if you're prepared to say it's fake news, you've got to provide me and the other readers why it's fake news. What is What causes you to say that? Otherwise, all you are is a lot of hot air. And, you know, of course things can be fake news. There's lots of fake news around. But anyway, if you're going to say it's fake news, back it up by factual information that it's fake. And don't use snoops. Snoops is known to be part of the dark. Okay, so who's destroying England and Western Europe? Now, I, I'm surprised at this because it's been, I've had this um, focus on who is destroying America. And I've done a lot of research on that. And of course, that's the Brits. It's the, the British establishment. It's the Committee 300. Club of Rome was set up to destroy America. And the Bank of England, that was the last Vatican bank, according to the information that I was researching at the time. Now, in the run up to the Brexit vote, and you've just heard Sir William talk about the conclusions after he had heard Steve Baker and David Davis. I've not watched the David Davis one, don't know if it's available, but Steve, ba uh, Steve Baker is, I've published three parts so far, and there's, um, there's an hour and something to go. So it, it's very clear from what Steve Baker has reported in that committee meeting that Theresa May and her group in 10 Downing Street, within that central core of cabinet, have been running two horses, two projects. One for the Brexit, the exit of which Steve Baker has been very much involved in, but one to remain. 
and she actually voted to remain. She is a natural, she's a remainer. And so that's where her thinking is coming from. That's where her belief is coming from. So she's being duplicitous and the people, as Sir William said, are being, it's a complete betrayal. Now, I call it treasonous. Now, whether that is an accurate expression of what has happened, I, I will look into, but it's certainly a huge betrayal and the British people have been betrayed time and time and time again. Because unfortunately, the majority of British people, unlike the American people, who are prepared very often, and the Canadians, are prepared to do their work and do research, particularly since we've had the internet. But the British people are less so. That's what I'm finding. That's what I've found. I'm out on a limb. <laughs> some of the comments are uh, quite quite funny actually uh, and one was um, oh old lady you know and yes I'm 79 and most people when they hear me say that my god you don't look it that's not the point I've had 79 years of life and so, so I said to this guy well you, got, you, you haven't had that you don't know what you know you haven't got the yardstick of experience I say to my children, never worry about moving on in years, moving past in summers, because that's the very thing that gives you the wisdom. That's the very thing that gives you, you've got the remembrance, remembering what it was like and what was said politically and what have you very many years ago. So it's not that we forget and we're not all doddery in a rocking chair knitting. So in the run up to the Brexit vote, in 2016, immigration came to the fore as the key issue. Yeah, because our borders, being, our, our country was being flooded, absolutely flooded with immigrants from all over the place. And we're a small country geographically. But of course, the European Union has a policy of opening borders to all member countries. But let me say here, and I don't know if he's going to touch on this, actually, the run-up to the Brexit vote really should not have been about immigration. It should have been really, as Nigel Farage said some weeks ago, this is a matter of, of sovereignty. We want the right to make our own laws. We want the right to actually vote and be democratic within our own parliament and take them to task when they are not and boy they need to be taken to task the cabinet need to be taken to task for doing all that they've been doing and behind closed doors that's duplicitous so the eu wants one continent no separate countries and the way to achieve that is by creating massive floods of immigrants destroying traditions and cultures that define countries in the process, accept terrorism as inevitable. Don't talk or write about the actual effects of immigration. You know, keep shut up. That would be hate speech. Maybe I'm involved in hate speech. Keep eyes and mouth shut and march straight ahead into the future of the one European continent ruled from above by the EU. Now, I have been saying that the EU was set up, we joined the EU, Britain joined the EU, under Ted Heath, who happened to be a paedophile, and that's not so off the, the main subject as people might think, because in the European U Union, there are many paedophiles. In fact, quite some while ago, I was um, shown that the head, I think he was the head prosecutor, I think it was of the Netherlands, but it was one of the head prosecutors in that group within Europe who was the top that he ran the paedophile group. And uh, yeah, so it's very, it's very interesting. So what we've got is the core of the globalist movement, which comes out of the Committee 300, and the one world order. One could call it the one world paedophile order, or otherwise you could call it the one world satanic order.
because along with much pedophilia goes and certainly involved in a lot of Catholic priests and inside the Vatican, alongside their abusing children, go the use of these children for satanic rituals. That's why I say it is the one world satanic order. And that's what your, your, your European Union is. Ever since the UK vote to leave the unelected, terminally corrupt and rotting edifice known as the European Union, so agree there, stall tactics and threats have been launched at Brits. First it was, it's going to take a long time to untangle the UK from the EU, and I heard an Australian media person say that. It was complicated. Actually, that tactic was predated by Prince Obama of traveling to England. Prince Obama, wonderful. <laughs> traveling, who I par apparently is in Gitmo, and apparently sang like a real dicky bird. And, and that's why I think that that's what led to George Soros's arrest. It was through Obama being terrified of obviously certain pressure that was being put on. I don't know if they still use waterboarding and it apparently came through his bird singing that George Soros was arrested. If that is correct, check, but not in Snoops. So, so Prince Obama traveling to England to warn the population they'd stand at the back of the line in forming separate trade deals with the US if they left the EU. But of course what he didn't see is that he wasn't going to be there as president and nor was Hillary. It's called interfering in the political affairs of another nation. <laughs> yes, Mr Obama. Now it's the EU and Queen Merck beating the UK to the punch by plotting trade deals with India and China, all behind back doors, in order to leave the British out in the cold. But you see, maybe those people like Modi of India and China, maybe uh, they know what they're doing. But the basic question is, is Britain a nation? Does it exist? It's a question citizens are supposed to answer, not Merkel or Obama or the EU. This was a question, and I'd not read this first, I just glanced over it and I thought I want to read this. This is a question that over supper this evening I said to the friend I'm staying with, who's exactly the same age as I am, so we've had very similar experiences. I said the thing is that our culture has changed so much during this invasion of other cultures. I'm not making them wrong or bad. I mean, I, I think there are some extremely questionable people that have come in who have been, in quotes, turned into um, violence. But we are not the culture that we had, let's say, 30 years ago, um, just arbitrarily. So what does British mean now? It's this issue, in case it's unclear, is all about globalism, yes? According to the totalitarian political philosophy of which the EU is a standard bearer, they are no nations. They are only mega corporations and banks. God help the people. I'm going to leave it at there. It's, it goes on, is lots more. It's interesting just going back to this. Actually, it is accepted by the government. A complete reason. betrayal, and that is what's happened to the people of Britain. There have been many other times, and when the bankers with the governments went to war, the whole thing was a charade, and this the people were duped into going to a war which had been created by the British. Remember those dangerous words, rule Britannia, and those eager beavers waving their little flags. Very dangerous. To stand and honour a flag with honour is one thing, but to sing 
lustily. Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves, and Britain never, never, never shall be slaves. And they don't realise that they are slaves. We've all been slaves to the bankers and slaves to a tyrannical government, which was intent on creating a globalist, one world satanic order. And thank God in America, you've got Trump. And what a breath of wonderful fresh air he is. God bless. Stay well. Tanya Alvin saying, have a great day.